back. Give me a minute. I'm going to go tweet that we're back. And there we go. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this thing going. So let me close down Twitter. I'm uh, I tried to uh, focus this time on the stuff at hand and not get too sidetracked by font stuff. Um, but I'm still carrying on that conversation with uh, Captain Craft slash Jeremiah because uh, I want to figure out what he was trying to get at. All right. Um Yeah, so let's make that script. Okay. Alright, so what we want to do here is basically we have a series of tests right here. So let me get the. Um, we want to run. Um, uh, we're going to push for coder non source real quick so that we can set a couple of things um, slash test data. We're going to run. Um, we're going to set. Um, uh, 
Okay, and then um, no. So let's call this like um, um, path or like yeah, run path, and then we'll set that to current directory slash sample files, and then we're gonna get the uh, input or data path will be the current directory slash the input data. So there we go. And then what we have to do is go over to the build directory where we're going to get um, Build will just equal that, and then let me see. Um, do, 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 do. So then we can run build slash for ed and we want to do all of this under the run path. Ah, you're on the phone flying Solomon. Hello to you too, by the way. So now we're going to tell it to run a test, right? I believe that's the syntax. So let me come over here. Yeah, so run test input. And then I want to tell it to run one of the tests. So let me go look at the input data and that's going to be under data path slash like test boot strap dot for id so now to add a new regression test i simply have to create it and then add it to this list maybe at some point i want to auto generate that list but i don't know because i'm going to have four id files that i'm uh uh that's a, um you just input the word phrase that's a sign in my head flying Solomon, and it interrupted my train of thought just because a 4ID file is in this directory doesn't mean I actually want to run it. Some of them are going to be just for call, like full click and write for code or osmos are both things I don't actually want to run directly. They're just for calling. They're for invoking from other scripts. So, um, I think I'll just maintain the list manually because that's really not that big a deal right now. And it will be if it becomes a big deal then I can find a way t around it, but I feel like either way I'm going to end up maintaining a list because what's the auto generator going to do? How is it going to figure out which ones to actually run? I don't think it's going to figure that out. And so I'm going to end up with a list and the only advantage of auto generating this would be that the list is cleaner and then if I want to run these tests from a shell script like a .sh script as well, not just a batch script, um, then auto generating would be a little bit more attractive because uh, Because then I have one centralized authority of what the list is, and I don't have to um, like manually keep them in agreement with each other. Um, but right now I don't have that, and so it's not worth the effort. If I end up having a shell, a Linux version of the test system at some point, then I will set it up uh, auto generator from a script then. 
Flying Solomon. I have not read the one that he posted. I saw, um, I'm, you know, I don't think this is a secret. Uh, he gave me, like, an advanced copy, like, a few days ago, and he's edited a lot since then. It was not the final, like, the one I read was not the one he actually posted. He did a lot of editing. But I read a version of it, um, uh, but I'll probably read the new one since it's edited a bunch. I have not read the new one yet. All right. So we have run regression tests. Let's come over here. Run regression tests. any good reason for my keyboard to be wobbling. Unless it's this darn thing right here. Yeah, it's just the table, I guess. So, um, let me reload. I'm going to leave these down for you guys, too. I know people tend to ask for that. Let me reload the project and F6. No, I just said reload. Load the pro. Are we not there. We go. Reload the project. F6. <laughs> All right. Neat. Um, uh, so I'm going to put this under here and here and test yeah flying solomon's right i do need to add the thing that actually like checks the result of the test to the script still i forgot about that when i was setting it up so let's try that again we're going to run this test a few times this way so th Fun to watch. Neat. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, everything is error prone. Writing a batch script that checks automatically is just as error prone as checking by hand. Honestly, the only way to get um, a good test system is to. Uh, get a new job and and make it and uh, and like not write code anymore because then in kind of that way where if the question is is all of the code you've written well tested the answer is yes if you stop writing code so yeah yep, 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 yep. but it's all a game of probabilities we're just trying to improve the probability that we catch a bug before we ship so But that's not an excuse to make bad software. We're trying to improve that probability uh, uh, to within as close to z zero as possible that we ship with a bug, right? Um, trying to be ruthless about how low we get that probability now. Um, wait. Um, So Flying Solomon, right now all I'm doing is te testing for crashes. I haven't set up a thing to test for content correctness yet. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned that before, but we need to figure out why it's saying you cannot find the path specified, because that's a bit odd, right? I find that odd, because it runs everything fine. Why is it saying it can't find the t path specified if everything is running just fine? Is it not finding sample files? Is that the one that's failing? That would explain why it doesn't open the Unicode test file. So let's go take a look at that. 
for coder non source test data sample files it should be finding sample files ah All right. Yeah, I agree with you that that it's not good enough to just do crashes. It's just the starting point because I all of the things I will need for testing crashes are a subset of all the things I will need for testing um, correctness. And the idea of doing input testing is to avoid having to do too much of that, like um, saving scroll positions and stuff. If it's just uh, standardized on input, then yeah, we could go deeper and save like, oh, instead of saving a series of states, let's or, or a series of inputs, let's save this state here, and then run the test from there. But that, you know, you're asking for trouble in terms of introducing possibly a change in the way the state is stored in Forcoder such that it becomes hard or meaningless to recover like to restart from that state. I'm trying to devise tests such that their basic format lasts forever or for a very long time. Again, lowering the probability that we have to throw away a test and find a new way to test the same thing. And input re restricting the test to input is very nice because we will always need to get input. The input stay uh, format is very stable, and um, the only time a test becomes invalid is when we change what input is supposed to do, which does happen, right? But it also means that we're not changing to a new format where I have to redevise how I test the thing slightly. I don't have to make a new format for saving state and loading state. Um, I don't have to convert old tests by format. Um, and even even there, any kind of recording of states would have this problem. The only kind of state I could save would be the state of a file. Like if I took a file and dumped it, and then uh, diffed it. Like if if I dump each successive version, and I'm always diffing to the original correct like the the exemplar of what it's supposed to look like that I could see being a useful way to test which is how I think I'll do content testing is basically I will have I'll, I'll have a way to run this test and save it as an exemplar or run this test and check against the exemplar and when you save exemplar you're kind of saying overwrite whatever the fuck is there and you know if I have a bug I am now gonna pay the price for it by making it the exemplar but even that's not that big a deal because later if someone reports that like that's a bug you don't catch is what that means and the only way to go catch that bug is to find a simpler more less error prone way to generate the exemplar which is another approach you can take for a lot of these things but if there's no easy way to do that then the, the, you still get the benefit of you're comparing two independent things all the time and anytime you find a difference you can ask why is there, is there a difference and you might find that the bug is now eliminated that you didn't realize was there before and then you save it but I'm not going to do any fancy internal four coder states I'm only going to save the state of a file I want stuff that the format is super stable on so at some point probably actually soon we'll add in the ability to make a um, file diffs uh, and check that like basically just do a file equality test maybe I'll actually do a full on diff so that I can like inspect the difference that would be kind of useful and um, compare it against an exemplar uh, of what was supposed to happen when you ran that test the only tricky thing with that is how do I like, I have to think about that a little bit more than what I've done so far but I believe that that would be useful if that's what you're getting at and then what would happen is those tests would look like you have some source file, you load it, and then you um, type stuff into it, right? You do whatever inputs you want, and then you save it, and you close. And then you run the diff outside the forecoder, right? And somehow you have a way of saying, run this in exemplar mode, or like run this in like whatever we want to call that mode where it saves over, it doesn't do a diff, but it saves over the um, 
the correct the 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 canonical output um, um yeah so the problem there's other things like file permissions i agree that starts to get a little bit closer to like things that are t harder to test using this method which i understand but we're not trying to be able to test literally everything i want to i want a test system that's low effort and like I, I since this is a probability game I'm, certain bugs i'm going to keep trying to catch by hand this is just supposed to help with the large section of bugs which i could catch with an automated system right and um I want the if if I put in a ton of effort to catch those extra few bugs that I can still catch by hand, I have to always ask myself, is that a trade off that's worth it? And I don't feel like that's worth it. Although permissions is probably not that big of a deal. File permissions I can probably just do as well as the diff, right? Like the I'm talking I'm talking about things internal to Forcoder. I don't necessarily want to try to save, but file permissions you could probably do too. Um things which uh, I can count on to work the same way for a long time. <laughs> so, um, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to say that is doing basically what I want it to do, and we can continue to extend it as necessary. If it comes a time when I want to run these tests on Linux or something, then we will revisit this list so that I can have one centralized canonical version of the list instead of two different ones that I'm maintaining. And for now we'll go back to the stream to do and say we have a script for running regression tests. Now it says here that what I wanted to do next was expand the input scripting language. I actually don't want to do that. We'll do that someday, but I feel like putting that off because that is testing stuff that's a little bit outside of the kinds of bugs I'm wanting to catch right now. I want to, I want to catch them, but I think that there is lower hanging fruit to start on the fuzzer first. So. Now what we want to do is we want to look at how do I want to generate input data. I could generate these scripts, which are very easy to generate. It's a format that I understand in my head. Or I could just generate these. Um, I think I'm actually going to generate scripts and then compile them because generating the simulation events is harder. You have to get the counter indexes correct. You you know there's just you can't f print f this as easily and just make nice scripts that you then compile. So I think we'll auto-generate the scripts and then we will compile them. And Captain Kraft, have you seen the um, JAI test testing framework blog post. I think I'm going to do this. Um, So, um, Karifa, the thing that motivates me to do a lot of work on testing is that um, I don't, I'm, I'm sick of bugs. I want to get off of fixing everyone's bugs. So, I know that if I knew where all the bugs were, I could fix them all. It's just a matter of not, of like, of not finding them easily enough. So, right now, I've gotten to a point where a really solid testing system that hits 80% of bugs 
consistently and quickly is uh, uh, ooh, let me bring up that that link for you then. I'm posting a link on the chat for uh, Captain Kraft who has not seen the JAI testing blog post. Yeah, so um, here's actually the biggest thing that gets four coder all the time right now. All, almost all of my crashes turn out to be this. And that is, four coder has this um, you know, sort of history of me having written it while I was learning lots of things. And one thing I didn't have any discipline for was bounds checking my buffers. Like my buffer reads and writes when I was younger, when I was first starting off for coder. Now I've kind of learned my lesson and I don't screw this up all the time. It's still kind of one of my worst bugs, which is why now I always ship for coder um, or not ship, I always try to test four coder in a mode where I, uh, especially for the end of buffer, but even at the beginning of a buffer, but mostly at the end of a buffer, I put a, um, if this is, this is the direction you guys see it, I put the buffer at the end of a page so that when I allocate, say, I'm like, give me 2,000 tokens, right, give me space for 2,000 tokens. I align it so that the end of that buffer is right at the end of a, vir a virtual page, and then I allocate the next virtual page after it and set it as, you know, no read, no write permission so that it'll crash as soon as I read or write one byte past the buffer. And um, doing that has helped me catch bugs faster, but it still isn't good enough because you still have to trigger it. And so the point of this round of testing is basically I have that set up, and so it's helped a little bit for catching these bugs, but I need to do an even better job. And so I want to just throw as much shit as I can at it to get it to hit those boundaries all the time. And the best way to do that is to, like, the, the, thing that, the things where it hits these boundaries a lot are when the buffer reaches a certain size, like it's like, oh, it's now 4K, and um, we're iterating to the very end of it for some reason. Or we're, now that it's 4K, we iterate literally to the very end and then pass one. And we don't have a thing that says, don't try to read this byte if we're past the end of the buffer because there's no byte there. Um, and so now that it's full size or something, it will just read that. Um, it also happens a lot with tokens, as I pointed out, um, like when I'm iterating over tokens and I do go to the next token, and now my token I is past the end of the token array, but like I don't check in that code for whatever reason I didn't think to check that token I was still within the range and so then I go and read something or write something past the end of that token array and so basically since these are all based on often things that are dynamically growing the the bug triggers only under the circumstance where you have exactly filled the length of the buffer to equal its capacity and then you go and do some more work with it, right? Um, that causes it to do a full iteration, like trying to render it or something. And the best way to catch those kinds of bugs is, as far as I can tell, start with a fairly small s starting point, like a small file, and um, keep inserting a thing into it, one after another, like just insert a series of tokens and just make sure that you can insert tokens at all kinds of sizes. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to create what I'm calling a fuzzer. It doesn't, it's not really going to do fully random, rather I'm going to kind of direct it to generate the tests of certain classes that I need. And maybe someday I'll introduce random, randomized components. Um, uh, but as I thought about this, random isn't really what I want. It's just sort of automatically generated input data, uh, kind of like a fuzzer. Uh, so um, that is what we are building next, is a thing to automatically generate some 4IS scripts that create tests that exercise for coder enough to push it past those boundaries where I fucked up the bounds checks. And that way, because the other thing that happens is, 
when I'm looking at the old code, I just get so n grossed out by it that I don't even bother to do it correctly now, even though if I if I was smart, what I would do is I would just say, from now on, I do a good job when I write this code, but instead I look at it and I'm like, well, the quality is already low. So I, I even this has kind of worked as a regression test, too, because I think it's good right now. We might not catch any bugs doing this today, because I found one, over the a couple over the last week of this class, um, of a couple of spots where this was still happening, and I fixed them, and who knows, maybe that was the last of them. We might find a bunch more of them. We might not find any more of them, but we're going to try. So let's see what happens. And once we've got this, it will continue to catch these moving forward in case I make any more stupid mistakes like that. So this is going to go under meta. So that builds my tests. What I'm going to make right now is um, like a test builder builds a test script into a test data file. I want one that generates um, tests, that then generates test. There we go. Now this is being created on this day, March the 16th. And let's see. I'm almost certainly going to want some of this. Um, actually, maybe just that much. I'm going to need this. And then, um, yeah, we'll get, we'll do a print usage. And the usage for this is going to be pass it nothing. There we go. The easiest print usage I've ever done. We don't even have to do it. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Exit one. There we go. Now, we're going to need to make another script for this. We're running out of space on our scripts, so I'm going to go ahead and avoid F8 because I believe that's one of the keys that leads. You know, I can't remember. Mm, no, it's fine. All right. I think maybe it's F10 then. And you know, I, I never remember to go to the bathroom before I start a stream. It's, it's a big problem. It's just, this time of day is when you gotta when you gotta be mindful of these things. So I'm going to set this up. Um, generate tests dot bat, and it might be that I end up just folding this into the build tests script at some point. But I want to be able to iterate on it right now, so I'm separating them out. Right? I might end up making like uh, generate and build tests dot bat, or just uh, like build tests dot bat that is both of these glued together and get rid of so I don't have any way of separating them. Uh, but not yet. Okay. Um, do do do. We're just gonna need to come over here and set this to like that. Uh oh. It's gonna do stupid shit. Don't do stupid shit. Stop it. No, don't don't do that. Ah, all right. There we go. And I will be right back. Wait, let me just check the time. How long have I been streaming? Thirty minutes. In that time, I've done what? Yeah, I'm just going to cut the stream off here and we will resume in a minute. That way I don't make these streams too long. Alright.
One minute, folks.